Important functions of the blood include transport, regulation, and protection. There's important chemicals that are transported throughout the bloodstream constantly, and those can range from nutrients to different gases. Oxygen and carbon dioxide, for example, are transported on the hemoglobin of the red blood cell. There is me metabolic waste that go to the lungs and the kidneys for elimination, such as carbon dioxide that goes to the lungs and we exhale the carbon dioxide. And there's also the transportation of hormones that go from the endocrine organs to the target organs for distribution. The next function is regulation, and this is all about keeping our body in homeostasis within a very specific range. And so one example of this would be maintaining a pH between 7.35 and 7.45. Whenever that pH goes out of balance, there's there are chemicals that act as buffers to help to prevent any drastic changes. And the last function is that of protection. And the first thing we think of for protection is blood loss. Whenever there's a, a hole or damage to the blood vessel wall, there are small uh, cell fragments called platelets that basically plug that hole in the blood vessel wall. And this leads to clot formation. And that hole is eventually replaced by a fibrin network. And we'll discuss this a little later. And the last example of protection has to do with getting rid of any excess dangerous chemicals. Urea and uric acid are two examples, and both of those contain nitrogen. And nitrogen levels are very bad to the bloodstream whenever they get above a certain level that can be toxic. And also with protection, we have our white blood cells and our antibodies. And I have here listed that the antibodies are made of gamma globulins and these are small proteins and because of this word, it's related to the word immunoglobulin. So the gamma globulins are part of the immunoglobulin. So the composition of blood, there's two main parts to the blood. There is the, the formed elements and there's also the plasma. The plasma is the matrix of the connected tissue. It's a non-living matrix. And because there's a matrix, that's what puts it into the category as connective tissue. As I mentioned, the formed elements are going to have three components, the erythrocytes, leukocytes, and platelets, which are cell fragments. And the formed elements, this is often referred to as the hematocrit. The hematocrit is the percent of the blood volume, which is erythrocytes, red blood cells. And also, with, also in addition to the erythrocytes, are white blood cells and, and platelets. Those are found in the Buffy coat, which is a very small portion, as we'll see on this diagram. So this diagram shows the removal of blood. After it's removed and put into a test tube, it's then spun down via a centrifuge so that the most dense portion of the blood moves to the bottom. And as you can see, um, just to reiterate, the percent of red blood cells is called the hematocrit. So if somebody has a low hematocrit, that could uh, mean anemia. If they have a very high hematocrit, this could be dangerous and could lead to what's called polycythemia, a very viscous type of red blood cells. It's essentially the opposite of anemia. And the remaining portion is the plasma, the 55%. So the next slide is the physical characteristics and volume of blood. 
And blood is always a red color, but the degree of redness is going to determine the de amount of oxygen that's present. So if the, if the blood is a scarlet red, a bright red, then there's going to be a high amount of oxygen. And this is what we would find in arteries. If there's a low amount of oxygen, then it's a dark red, and we find this in veins. So venous blood in veins would be dark red, and arterial blood, oxygenated blood, would be in arteries. So blood is, there's always a, a greater amount of blood volume in males and females. And the amount of blood in males is bet about between 4.5 million cells per microliter and 5.9 million cells per microliter. And a little lower in females. The plasma, the liquid portion of the blood, is a straw-colored sticky fluid. And there's many, many solutes that are found within it. And these are a list of a few of them. The formed elements are, again, going to be these three parts, the red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets. And the platelets specifically are going to promote coagulation and reduce blood loss. So these formed elements, they're going to originate from the bone marrow. So the bone marrow is the part of the body where these cells originate from. Now, red blood cells, they're going to have little markers on them, which are proteins called antigens. So I think it helps to think of these antigens as little zip code markers or identifier tags. And they're proteins that are embedded in the plasma membrane. And they identify the red blood cell as being type A or type B. And then our next slide shows the composition of plasma. This composition of plasma is going to be mostly water. It's 90% water. The solutes, there's a very wide variety of solutes, but a lot of them are the electrolytes, the charged ions. Then there are three plasma proteins, three groups. There's albumin. And the albumin, its main role is to maintain osmotic pressure. The globulins are going to be immunoglobulins, the antibodies. They're made by plasma cells. And then the third type of plasma protein is the fibrinogen. And that's important for coagulation, the final step in the stoppage of blood. So the um, right column here is examples of nitrogen-containing molecules, urea, uric acid, and creatinine. The creatinine is a waste product from muscle metabolism. The nutrients are any small molecules that are used as fuel for our cells. So there's carbohydrates like glucose amino acids, the building blocks for proteins, triglycerides, cholesterol, vitamins. And then the last two categories are respiratory gases like oxygen, carbon dioxide, and hormones like steroid and thyroid hormones.